And then, but David Carradine was sitting right next to me. Actually, you have to be a star in order to sit with David Carradine. This guy has a lot of ego. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I don't believe it. He, he has been uh, doing this show for more than 10, 12 years. And yeah. he is one of the, we call it the co-producer. As a matter of fact, he was the supervising producer. Okay? Mm-hmm. And uh, he chooses the actors. Okay. If the casting director chooses this guy, no, I don't like him. Uh, I want to check somebody else. Mm-hmm. It's him and uh, Steven Seagal. Let me tell you, these two people, they, they, they want to decide whom they want to work with. Mm-hmm. Even the director of this I'll talk to Steven Seagal later on. Okay. okay. Anyway, um, it, it took David Carradine an hour, hour and a half to do the same job. We know that David Carradine's hair was on shoulder heights, right? Shoulder length, I mean, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But we're not, in a, in a union, in Hollywood, you're not allowed to cut actors' hair unless you have their consent and approved by their act, by their agent. Okay. Because if you shave my hair ball, what if next two weeks later I want to have a movie that's done in Hollywood? Yeah. Exactly. So it's on perfection. So uh, David Carradine's hair was shoulder length. My hair was medium uh, length. But they didn't cut an inch. Now that is a Hollywood makeup specialist. I really adore him. Mm-hmm. If you look at my head, I sent it to photo this morning. Totally bored. Did you, did you check the email today? Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. you got the lady uh, working on David Carradine, and then you're sitting yeah. beside him with another yeah, lady. Yeah, I've done it. Yeah. It. He is still doing it. And Mickey Rooney. Yeah. And... Uh, and two more people. Anyway, why it took them too long? First of all, because the hair is long. Mm-hmm. Secondly, he needs to have a cigarette, maybe, maybe half an hour, or maybe a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> Thirdly, he fell asleep from time to time. Wow. Well, this person, you know, he takes a lot of work. We have to understand, he works so much hard. Yeah. A lot of steroids and that, like, you know. So he fell asleep. And then, and then the makeup lady doesn't dare to offend him. So it took him a long time to get it. Mm-hmm. Now, it is very uncomfortable for me. He probably get used to it. With the glue and the cap on my hair. So I use a hat to cover it. Mm-hmm. When I need to be on the set, then I took it off. Yeah. Okay. And uh, well, you have to be uh, a bald head, you know, to play monk. <laughs> Obviously. But, <laughs> David Carradine, he said, I don't know Kung Fu. I'm a dancer. I'm a singer. So I stand out from his son double, looked exactly like him from behind. Okay. Okay, where a uh, uh, suede guy with an ass and, you know, and sometimes long hair. And the stunt double did almost his all his job. He had two stunt doubles. Okay. You don't see the stunt double double's face. By law, you don't see the face of a Thunderbolt. You only see the bag and the side at a distance mm-hmm. for those uh, stunts. So then they on a fight and a kick, and David Kennedy walked in and just repeat the last kick and show his face. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> now, my trailer was next to him mm-hmm. and between the director's trailer and his trailer because being a, a, a guest star played two roles, and when I was passing by his trailer, I saw him, David Carradine, and his son David in a movie, okay? Okay. You recall that? Um, the guy who played his son? Uh, no, 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 no. He come for Lady Company? Uh, no, I haven't seen that since I was, I was, this guy I was smaller. This guy Chris something, Chris something. Okay. They're always in the same aspect. In the beginning of Kung Fu, uh, 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 Pop, son, you know, they, they always show up for these two are the stars. Oh. Okay, Chris something, okay? Now, if you click my, my episode, mm-hmm. and you'll see them. Okay. And uh, when I passed by, he was sitting in the trailer, two guitars and things. Oh. Uh, not bad. Yeah, it's not bad. Mm-hmm. So, so he, he was more in the music. Actually, David Kahn has his own uh, uh, production company, entertainment company. Okay. And uh, he was in a dancer. He's just L.A. But somehow, uh, he just got into Kung Fu. All right, talk about Mick Maloney. Now we 
go to make a movie. Okay. Well, too bad David Cody has to be in Thailand in a, in a hotel. Yeah. And uh, uh, nobody knows what happened. Mm -hmm. But uh, I know some of it, and uh, which I don't think it's it's appropriate to mention it now. Oh, that's the problem. The, the, uh, the fans mm -hmm. really want to know the fact. Yeah. I don't want to get it. Anyway, let's go back to Mick Roney. Mick yeah. Roney is a guy that's funny, <laughs> active, moving around, making people laugh. Never have a one dumb moment. Yeah. And this guy was 80 something, 86 years old. Wow. Now we know that the reverend had the power when he said, Are you guys ready? We're going to shoot now. Mm -hmm. uh, camera ready? Uh, 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 sound ready, recording? Everybody quiet, check the sound, no dog barking, you know, turn uh, that time they didn't have a cell phone. Yeah. Okay, hold your breath. You know something? David Carradine, I mean, I mean, Mickey Rooney, continuously talking to David Carradine, and they, they didn't ignore, they just did it. Talking, talking, continuously talking. Actually, nobody was there to do any talking when the right to say, ready, everybody. It's like a general, okay? Mm -hmm. You know that big? They keep talking, and everybody was listening, smiling, mm -hmm. and even the director was admitted to it, listen, and follow it. And everybody laughs. Okay, action. So it's every time before a film taking, Mickey Rooney had to talk to make people laugh, which is good, make everybody relax. Yeah. All right? Now, once... This was something I just couldn't believe it. David Carradine gave us a piece of paper. And Mickey Rooney had a beat. Mm -hmm. La, da, la, da. Uh, and then he said, I oh, hope, dear beloved, we're gathered here together. To <laughs> <laughs> so he put the paper backwards and tried to read that, but which is very funny. And then when he turned around, and then people thought, oh, he turned up after the reading. Dear beloved, <laughs> like wedding thing. That makes everything laugh, I can help it. Okay, and also at night time, that day time we have a lot of shooting in the evening, mm -hmm. he was doing a show uh, on a stage performer, I think, uh, called a Crazy for You, okay. a show. So he, his son gave me a ticket, mm -hmm. two tickets actually, and I brought one of my friend in, uh, in uh, uh, to watch. So it was a big, like a Broadway show. Mm -hmm. okay, this was in Toronto, okay, and uh, in the middle of the show, he came out, he was standing there, and then uh, the old girl was doing some sh music, she was going sing, and then and then, oh, he had short and uh, brown, but he moves around so amusingly. <laughs> so in other words, I'm trying to say, he, he was doing the shooting during the day, and the uh, musical uh, performance in the evening, this guy never gets tired. <laughs> he doesn't smoke, he doesn't drink. And, and, oh, and also he talked a lot about God. When I'm sitting there talking to him, he mentioned God. Anytime, God, God, God. This guy's a happy guy. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, but uh, going back to uh, David Carradine, he wasn't a happy And now he is happier. You know what I mean? Yeah. No yeah. more worry. No more bills to pay. In one of the uh, days that I was there, David Carey sitting there. The whole crew stopped. And I was sitting there too after big time. I didn't know what happened. And people say, Mr. Chan, uh, David's not happy. He just got a call. Two calls actually from LA. And uh, they uh, the uh, uh, we call it Revenue Canada, but they call it the uh, uh, Tax Department, okay? Okay, yeah. Something like that. And they have a special name. And he owes about a million dollars of tax. Oh, my goodness. He was upset. Obviously, his manager or agent didn't do the book very, uh, very well. Mm -hmm. And then later, he got another call. That, that was a really bad day. That wife, the present wife, wanted to go. Two calls came in with him one hour. 
was sitting there. And then there was a, remember in Hong Kong, uh, Karen had two little boys, about many years of old head, who wake up. Mm-hmm. Uh, you don't know Kung Fu Lightning Canary pretty well. Well, I, I, remember, I remember seeing it yeah. when I was younger. They always uh, like that. Because mm-hmm. when, when David Curley was a uh, young age, he was called Grasshopper in China. His, his master was blind and taught him to walk across the uh, rice paper okay. without making any wrinkle. Oh. You know, you, uh, this is very interesting. You're going to go back and watch the uh, first episode and watch my husband so you know what happened. He played from young all the way up to his uh, older age. And then uh, um, there were two boys always in the movies mm-hmm. because they're the key person. And so these two young boys, were, he was sitting there. I was sitting right next to him with his daughter, the big daughter, put arms around her there, gave her some tea. It was so right? mm-hmm. And then there were two boys ran around and around and he was really upset and and uh, I saw him give a kick on one of the boys. Uh, <laughs> and then the boy cried, went out, and told his father. And it happens that the father is a lawyer. <laughs> 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 so his father talked to the union. Right? We, on every episode or movie, the union sent a union rep mm-hmm. to be on set just to make sure that our members are well prepared, you know? Mm-hmm. Sometimes our member has something, not sure, they check with their union rep. Oh, should I do that? Do I need a number for that? You know, they have their uh, uh, union rep then. So the union rep came down to talk to David. You know, look, this is bad. His father's a lawyer. Mm-hmm. He can sue us, sue our company, sue you, sue the union. And everybody, I suggest you to apologize. I know how bad you feel, but that doesn't give you the right to kick somebody else's son. Yeah, it definitely, definitely. I was sitting on the same bench because I, would, I have a big scene to play with them, you know. Mm-hmm. And so uh, they didn't think no that. And after, Ten minutes or so. His daughter was talking. Nobody, nobody else there to talk to him. Mm-hmm. And finally, he stood up, and he there's a glass door. <coughs> he kicked, push kick, eh? Mm-hmm. Flat, flat foot kick, open the window. Uh, 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 I mean the door. Mm-hmm. He said, "Okay, I'm ready." This is what he said. Okay, I'm ready. Pick the door and went out. So there was a the boy there and a father there and union rep there, are waiting for his apology. You know what he did? He came out. He put his hand on top of his uh, boy's forehead, just rubbing around. You okay? Are you okay? He said three times. Are you okay? He didn't apologize. This guy is a big star in his mind. Mm-hmm. The producer. He doesn't, I never heard him say a word of song. Some guys just don't say sorry. Mm-hmm. You ever heard Rambo say sorry? No. <laughs> I don't think he would. Because he's, he's a big star and he's a hero. You know, we can do it. Up here. So, and he did three times and then he came back. I heard you in the rest of the so For David, a big star to do that, I think it's good enough. And that thing was the down. He came back, put down the same chair, and started to, so, to cry. He mm. felt 